Hello, we're here at Euro PCR 2023. My name is Andreas Bambach from London in the UK and I'm here with Stefan Windecker from Bern in Switzerland. And our topic today is to talk about the perspective, the future of TAVI. Um, what will it look like in five years? Stefan. So it's a pleasure with you uh, to be with you, uh, Andreas. And uh, certainly, at first, I would acknowledge uh, that uh, TAVI uh, really constitutes a paradigm shift in the way uh, we manage patients uh, with aortic uh, stenosis uh, today. So over the past uh, uh, 15 years, there really has been a plethora of evidence uh, in form of randomized clinical trials where uh, TAVI uh, enjoys now in class one indication uh, irrespective uh, of uh, surgical uh, risk. And um, looking uh, forward, I think before talking about expanding indications, I would make one remark that despite this tremendous progress, uh, still uh, many patients with uh, severe symptomatic aortic stenosis remain untreated. So we should not forget about uh, these patients uh, that don't receive appropriate uh, treatment at this uh, point in, in time. So you think we need to treat more patients and the population gets older, so it's even more. Uh, and then uh, I think it is also fair to say that there is not an even distribution across the globe uh, of this procedure. Um, do we see in five years that the penetration may be higher in countries where there is an under treatment at the moment? Yes, so, so first of all, I think we need to continue efforts to appropriately diagnose uh, uh, patients. You may even ask the question whether there should be a screening echocardiography at a certain uh, period of time. Second, as you mentioned, I think we live in a privileged area where in certain geographies, uh, TAVI is available and re is reimbursed, but uh, unfortunately uh, in the majority of countries there is no equitable access uh, to transcatheter aortic valve implantation and therefore it is important that in terms of economic uh, incentives um, this therapy that is minimal invasive uh, and equally effective as surgery is uh, more widely available. Mm -hmm, absolutely. And how about expanding indications, new indications. I think it is fair to say it is likely that we will do TAVI for indications that are currently not class one. Yes, uh, so certainly uh, the success of the procedure being a procedure that is safe with low procedural mortality uh, really begs the question whether there should be an expansion of indications. And the very first one is the one in asymptomatic severe aortic stenosis. Now, in the past, uh, there was uh, the thought that we need to balance back at the time of surgical aortic valve replacement the uh, periprocedural risk versus risks related to spontaneous ventricular fibrillation or patients becoming symptomatic. But I think these concerns have diminished uh, due to the safety profile of transcatheter aortic valve implantation. And we do have um, evidence that uh, actually in using surgery in asymptomatic severe aortic stenosis is beneficial, uh, not only in terms of hospitalization, but, but even in terms of mortality, although this is in younger patients also with bicuspid um, aortic stenosis. But nevertheless, that has triggered the interest uh, to start now several uh, randomized uh, clinical trials that even test a TAVI uh, versus watchful ta uh, waiting or any kind of aortic valve replacement, be it surgical or transcatheter aortic valve implantation. And I think over the course of the next one or two years, there will be several trials that will be presented and it will be very interesting uh, to see the outcome of those trials. So expanding indications. Any thoughts about lifetime management? It's, it's the word uh, in the field, uh, meaning we can't just put the valve into everybody, not ignoring the fact that they will live maybe longer than this valve uh, actually lasts. Um, 
that's an that's a very important question. Before coming to that, I just would mention uh, other expanding indications would certainly along that line also include moderate aortic stenosis. Yeah. I think there's increasing evidence to indicate that patients with moderate aortic stenosis may have as bad in prognosis as patients with severe aortic stenosis. And there are actually uh, uh, three randomized clinical trials ongoing that investigate now transcatheter aortic valve implantation versus um, pure conservative medical uh, treatment approach. And I think uh, the other uh, indications that we need to carefully evaluate are patients with bicuspid uh, aortic valve and uh, those younger than 65 years of age. Now, having said this, uh, these patients, let's say with moderate aortic stenosis or particularly those with bicuspid or younger patients, uh, back the question according to the lifetime management. Because the important question to ask at the uh, time of procedural planning is, what do we do in case more than one intervention will be necessary? Mm -hmm. Now, in average 75, 80-year-old, uh, probably the majority of patients require just one intervention. But that is completely different in a patient that is 65 years of age, and it is even more different in patients that are 55 years of uh, age. So at uh, the procedural planning, we need to carefully evaluate our strategy. Uh, which procedure comes first? Is it in transcatheter aortic valve implantation? And if that's the case, how a second or may potentially even third uh, um, intervention is enabled? And that brings up questions uh, regarding coronary access. Mm -hmm. This brings up uh, questions regarding commissural uh, alignment. This brings up questions regarding uh, long-term durability of valves and certainly brings up also questions rela uh, related to atrioventricular conduction disturbances in the f uh, need of permanent pacemaker implantation. Well, thank you. I, I think we can summarize that there will be a lot more TAVI in five years from now. A, because of um, expanding the penetration uh, of the use of TAVI for the existing indications in an aging population and adding on to those uh, the re-interventions that will come inevitably uh, because TAVI is used in younger patients so they need two or three procedures during their lifetime and of course expanding new indications for which we are eagerly awaiting the outcome of the randomized trials. Thank you very much for your perspective. Thank you, Anne Francis.